In this week's episode, we check out this newly installed Rotax 915IS turbocharged just aircraft super stole, built by Chris Grewan in Fair Play, South Carolina. All right, so I'm back here in Fair Play, South Carolina. I was here, I don't know, about a year ago. Stopped in and see uh, Chris here at Stolid Aircraft. Why? Because he just finished building another demo plane, his personal plane, powered by a super, not supercharged, turbocharged, turbocharged. Rotax 915. All right, again, so the reason why I want to run up here to Fair Play, South Carolina is not only did Chris just build another new airplane, which is an awesome just aircraft super stole, but this is the very first, very first yep. uh, Rotax 915 installation in a just aircraft. So I want to come up here and capture this for you so you can see firsthand what the installation looks like, talk to Chris about the details of everything it took to get this thing running. And it also has a certified adjustable prop on it. So Chris is going to talk about that right now. So this is actually the 914 uh, motor mount. It's the, we had to modify the mount a little bit to, to make it work. We did a lit, just a slight modification to it. We rounded out one of the tubes to make this motor mount work. That's about the only modification we had to do. Besides that, the motor mount works as is. So you can use this one. Um, Just Aircraft is doing an XL. They extended their motor mount, made a new one, and extended it out two inches for CG purposes. We didn't have to do that. I thought this plane would work well with a standard Super Stole and the handling with it as is. I wanted a lighter airplane, lighter handling, and more power. So that's why we decided to use the Rotax, uh, the regular 914 mount. And the XL model, just for clarification, the only difference in that airframe is it's two feet longer. Correct. Which is why just the company uh, was saying, or thinking they have to extend or change the engine mount. Correct. Okay. And I don't think they need to actually. I think they could have used this motor mount and I think they probably would have had a better end result, but we'll see. We'll have to see how the numbers play out. And just to uh, kind of recap on the 915, how much horsepower does that put out? It's 140 horse. Okay. And then you decided to go with a different propeller I did. And what did you choose and, and uh, talk about the details of that? So light sport rules are going to be changing. Um, they propose to do a single lever constant speed rule. So that means um, the pilot is the pilot doesn't have to change the prop control. Um, if the ECU can handle it, they'll allow it. So um, we decided to try the MT and um, the RS light systems to, to do this prop. So it's an MT propeller with the Yaris Flight Systems prop controller. All right, now for the technical stuff. The Rotax 915 IS is a four cylinder, four stroke liquid and air cooled engine with horizontally opposed cylinders. Now, all in without the fuel pumps, radiator and oil cooler, it weighs in at 186.4 pounds. It creates 141 horsepower at 5,800 RPMs. Max continuous performance is 135 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. All right, so going back to the installation of the 915, how different was this to like a 912 or 914, both wiring and plumbing? This was all brand new, basically. Um, the plumbing was completely different. We had to do everything for the turbo. As far as all the plumbing, as far as the intercooler, because the 914 doesn't have an intercooler. So we kind of had to modify everything. It was basically a brand new installation of everything. We had to rethink everything. It worked out really easily. I thought it was just kind of brand new. So we had to just kind of think outside the box, try and figure out how to keep everything as light as we could from the titanium firewall instead of stainless steel to just trying to make everything as easily, as light and accessible as we could from putting the intercool just down out of the cowling to keeping our runs for the turbo lines as short and accessible as we could um, to our plumbing lines the same way. The plumbing lines we just had to, you know, we had to just try and use as much stock stuff as we could, keep it short and keep it clean, try and make it just simple. We used um, the VPX, the VPX Sport for the electrical stuff, which was all brand new to us too. So that was kind of just thinking outside the box, breakerless electrical systems. That was all new to us too. Worked out really well, kept it clean, kept it light, but it was just new. So everything in this airplane is kind of cutting edge and new to us. 
but it worked out really well. All right, and being this is a turbo, what did you have to do to, uh, to keep it cool, both on the oil side of things and then the turbo? So the intercooler was a challenge. There, a bunch of different people have done a bunch of different things. From putting the intercooler up on the side and running ram air into it, to putting it up on top, to all kinds of different things. I thought the simplest thing was, was to hang it out the bottom of the cowling and let fresh air just hit it. If you do that, I thought it would cool the best. So far, it seems to be working really well. Um, the oil, however, that was a challenge. We, we were told at first to use the 914 oil cooler. However, that hasn't really worked out real well, so we're upsizing to a bigger high flow oil cooler. Temps weren't bad, but they were a little bit high in the 220s, which is within their normal range, but we wanted a little bit cooler down in the, you know, maybe low 200s, 210, 212. So I'm gonna upsize to a little bit bigger of an oil cooler. Uh, Rotax says you can use, there's two different types that they want you to use, so we're gonna upsize that. Now let me introduce you to our sponsors that make all this possible. Awesome companies like Dynon Avionics, AirTech Coatings, AV Nation, and Airworks. Check the description below this video for links to these great companies and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. All right, Chris, so look, looking at this, uh, you mentioned off camera, you did something kind of custom for the turbo intake. What'd you end up using? So a lot of these installations, people use NACA scoops to try and get air to the turbo. I found that they're really kind of ineffective as slow as we fly. Um, the guy that's doing a builder assist in here had a lot of relationship with the sling aircraft. He found this turbo um, air box, so we decided to use it and give it a try. It gives ram air into the turbo to keep it very cool, so we decided to give it a try. It actually fits very tightly, didn't have a lot of room. I've been trying it, I've been seeming to have pretty good results on it, so I think we're going to try and use this in the future on every installation. The biggest question I think probably is, you know, the Just Aircraft has been using Titan and Rotax for some time. We're talking about you know, 100 horsepower to 180 horsepower. Yep. So why choose the 915 at 140 for your build? So there's a couple of reasons. A, I like the lighter Super Soul. Personally, I think it's just, for my taste, it's a little bit nicer flying airplane. But fuel burn A is a lot better with a 915. You're, you know, you're burning six to seven gallons an hour at, at, at cruise mostly. The Titan burns, you know, seven to nine, so it's a little more cost effective. Power to weight ratio with this engine, the way we've set it up, power to weight is about the same as a Titan. The Titan, when you figure in the weight of this XL, which is usually 11-ish, 100 pounds, this comes in around 900 pounds, you figure all that in, the power to weight is about the same. So you get the same power that you get from that. Um, so when you really figure out the numbers, it's more cost effective to run this, this engine than it is the Titan. And you still get that really light appeal from the Rotax and you don't lose any power at altitude because it's turbocharged. So you get the added benefit when you're up at real high altitudes, you don't lose any performance with this engine. Which I'm sure you're, you're finding a lot of just aircraft builders are in higher elevations, mountains, which a turbo will really come in handy. It really does. And I've seen it myself, it, you know, when you get up really high, I mean, we're here, you know, in the Smokies where you have to cross these mountains at 9,000 feet, you feel that power loss. <laughs>
So moving around the plane, we're at the front here, talking about the landing gear. Uh, and the super stole is made for extreme stole, which is why you've got this huge wide stance here and big tires. Uh, talk to me about the setup on your suspension and then your tire brake wheel combo. So we did get, um, we, we have the normal landing gear. This is a standard landing gear setup. I did get Tony. Tony was nice enough to provide me with a set of his extreme shocks. Um, that we usually get on the XLs, but I wanted to try them on this particular airplane because we didn't know what the weight was going to come in. And he was a little concerned too about the weight on this airplane, but it really did come in kind of lighter than we all thought. So, but it, these shocks perform really well. Um, these shock monsters are really good shocks. They perform really well. You can set them up for either airplane. So you can dial them in from 200 PSI up to 250 PSI. It'll adjust for either airplane. So the standard Superstool or the XL. We have Behringer brakes on this, dual puck Behringer brakes, which, you know, these brakes will stop on a dime. For our kind of flying, when you're flying in mountains and off airport stuff, you can dial them in, you can dial the pressure in too, so you can stop really fast, very slow. Um, your braking power is second to none with these brakes. They're, they're a little costly, but they are well worth it. All right, Chris, so one of the things I, I noticed at, uh, I think, a recent show, that wasn't a standard, but I think is becoming more popular, is you guys are doing a split window or a split door on these now. I do, you know, this is the first one I did, uh, but when we travel cross country, you know, we all have these vents, and these vents come in really handy, they get you a lot of air, but hot summer days, it's really nice to fly with the doors open, but that kind of gets tiring, that, that blast of air, it just can wear you out a little bit. So having these windows really make a difference. You can crack them open and adjust them. Most of them have a shock on it, which opens it full open, which I don't tend to like because you get no adjustability. I made a little custom, a little custom mount here so you can just adjust the window to however you want it. You just, you know, just adjust a little knob and then you can open and close it to wherever you want. Get as much as you want or not, and you just lock it into place. And it keeps you it keeps you a lot cooler. And now you can go through the drive through and uh, That's right. pick up a hamburger. Get, get your hamburger and shake. <laughs> Something very bright and orange here is the, the strip across here we call those slats, Our right? Slats, so, yes. So what is it unique to just aircraft and the slat system? They are these are automatic, basically we always say automatic. They're aerodynamic slats. They operate on their own air pressure and angle of attack. So when you get the, the air speed right and the attack right these slats will open when they need to open um, they, they prevent stall and spins the other unique feature to just is the tail wheel talk about the details of that yes we have a, a shock tail wheel so we have a another 12 inch shock on the back that allows us to land pretty hard because we generally land on the tail wheel first when we land these airplanes so we can take a pretty hard bang when we land we also have a Jim Picola locking tail wheel which is a cast ring friction castering tail wheel, full caster, but it's a friction tail wheel. So it does caster 360 degrees, but it's a friction. So you almost have to, if you pick the tail up, you almost have to kick it to get it to move. So it doesn't want to just go out from under you. And also it's a locking tail wheel, so you can lock it from the inside of the cockpit. You can line up on the runway. You can just pull a lever, it'll pull a pin, and it'll lock that tail wheel straight. So inexperienced pilots can use it while they're learning how to fly a tail wheel. And then also if you get in the back country and you're on a side hill or in some really strange environment or in a really bad crosswind, you feel uncomfortable, you can throw that, lock that tail wheel, and get in and get out safely. So what did you use for your avionics and uh, engine controls? This is a new Dynon HCX 10 inch screen. Dynon's, um, I've been a Dynon dealer for quite some time and they've always treated me really well. They're good customer oriented company. If you ever have any problems, Dynon's there to take care of it. They provide a really good product at a good price. And I, I just really, I just really like their product. I think it's very user friendly and it's easy to install. And it's, they just make a really good product. Do you have to add something uh, in addition to you uh, for engine controls or engine instruments with the turbo? The only thing we had to add was for the prop. And this RS Flight Systems flight display is about the only thing you see here that's extra out of Dynon. And it was just for the prop control, and that's really about it. Everything else is Dynon. We did add a couple of things that I usually don't do. The barometer, separate barometer control, which you can do on the screen, but when you're flying, you're in turbulence, trying to use this particular knob, sometimes your hand gets bumped around. So I did find this separate display, very handy. It does work well. And I added a separate dimmer switch 
to dim this display as well. When you're in turbulence, it also helps if you're flying at night or in separate, separate situations if you need to dim the screen a little bit. Besides that, this is just all standard Dynon stuff. All right, Chris, tell everybody what you do when you're not flying the airplane <laughs> here in Fair Play, South Carolina. So we are a builder assist facility. Um, we have everybody come in, they build their airplanes here, we help them through that process. If you have any airplane, we specialize in just aircraft, but if you have any airplane and you don't have the space to do it, the time to do it all yourself, or just maybe lack the confidence to do it, you can bring your stuff here, use our hangar, use our facility, and we will walk you through that process, use our tools, use our space, and we'll make sure you get done and get you through that process so you can leave here with a flying airplane. And what's the best way to get in, in touch with you if somebody had a question about doing that? You can get us on our website at stolledaircraft.com. All right, well, thanks for checking out this episode uh, this week. Um, we'll probably come back here in the near future. As you can see, there's another Rotax 915 being built here, another just aircraft. So there will be two flying in the near, near future here in Fair Play. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to rivet down that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit all the bell notifications so you don't miss a single episode. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.